Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and anyone tuning in because they've accidentally left the YouTube on. Welcome to another thrilling episode of the Conservative Conundrum. And tonight we have a special treat. Suella Braverman, or as her colleagues like to call her, Leaky Sue. The MP who seems to have discovered a new planet, Compassion, and decided to give us all a guided tour. First, let's all take a moment to applaud the sheer audacity of our friend Suella. She starts by thanking the good people of Farham and Waterlooville, who, judging by this speech, must have sent her back to Parliament for her comedic talents alone. And <laughs> Energetic campaign, she said. I bet it was like watching a marathon where everyone's running in clown shoes. Now, Suella, in a newfound spirit of unity and cross party camaraderie, pointed out the Labour government's failure to address child poverty. Now, let's pause for a second. Yes, the Labour government, which, for those keeping track, is currently somewhere in the realms of an alternate universe. But hey, details, right? It's always good to have a scapegoat, even if it is imaginary. And then, like a magician pulling a rabbit out of the hat, she mentions scrapping the two child benefit cap. Suella's plea for ending child poverty and advocating for the sovereignty of the family unit felt like a grand performance. And who knew she had a soft spot for families, especially considering that back in 2010, the party she supports were busy using the economic crisis as an excuse to tie in belts, just not their own, of course. Thanks, thanks very much for, for coming We I wonder if the Honourable Lady might uh, say to the House, first of all, who introduced the cap uh, and why, and which way that the Honourable Lady voted when it went through this House. But wait, there's more. Suella bravely confronted the controversial stance. Don't have children if you can't afford them. Well, that's a bold move, considering that it sounds a bit like she's announcing a new slogan for a line of budget contraceptives. And yet, here she stands advocating for more children from lower-income families. It's almost like she's forgotten that the very policies she once supported made it harder for these families in the first place. And what's this? Suella's discovered that the cap has not necessarily worked. Hold the front page. In a shocking twist, data from the Joseph Roundtree Foundation revealed that 43% of children in larger families are in poverty. It's like discovering that water is wet or that politicians sometimes don't keep their promises. Groundbreaking stuff, eh? <laughs> but let's not be too cynical here. Suella's heart might actually be in the right place, assuming that it's not lost in the same Bermuda Triangle where they keep misplacing compassion and common sense. She wrapped up her speech with a call to come together in the spirit of compassion and common sense. A lovely sentiment. If only it weren't the equivalent of handing out umbrellas after a hurricane. So let's raise a glass to Leaky Sue, the unexpected champion of the poor and the downtrodden. Remember, folks, it's always the quiet ones you least expect. Except when they're loudly reminding you of their economic acrobatics from a decade ago. Now the speech of irony ended. Up stepped Sarah Sackman, Labour MP for Finchley and Golders Green, to do her maiden speech. And again, if Sarah's political career is short-lived, she'll be long remembered for this, hopefully. Uh, it's a pleasure to follow the member for Fairham. Like some of you, I'm somewhat surprised at her rewriting of recent economic uh, history. Um, she's had 14 years to fix the problems of child poverty and done precious little to do that. And so remember, my friends, I watch this nonsense so that you don't have to. So take care, my friends, and may your sense of irony never fail you.